All right, guys, so hopefully this video is to redeem myself from a mistake this morning. Um, I put up a YouTube video showing how to do this hitting section here with the lorem ipsum and the line after it with the little line in the middle of it and skew the whole lot so it's on the same angle. Um, I thought that was the question that the author was asking about. Uh, and I answered that question, which is actually still a valid thing. But the actual question he was asking about was the actual shape dividers on the outside of this uh, content box here, uh, not that uh, heading in the middle there. So I wanted to make a video showing my way of doing exactly what he has actually asked for. So heading over to the Bricks Builder, um, and I'm having a bit of trouble with my advanced email uh, dropping my CSS every now and then, so I'm gonna, if I have to refresh, just bear with me. Uh, what I have is a section, a container, and a content wrapper. I've just tucked some content inside there, so we've got something. Uh, so on my section, I will come back to all the CSS. So if I look at my style, my layout, all I'm doing is putting a 5REM top and bottom padding to give me some uh, color, uh, and I'm setting a background color on that uh, of just whatever color we want for that section. And one other feature is just stop working, which is my hover to set the color. I don't know why, but okay. Um, so we set a background and I think on the CSS, I don't have anything there or do I? I can't tell because this has dropped the CSS again, which is the bug that I'm currently having with AT. So I'm just gonna hit the save and hit the reload now unfortunately i'm running local by flywheel and for some reason on my machine i'm not sure everyone else has this issue it's a hell of a lot slower than my actual hosting so it takes a little bit of while to do the refresh so just bear with me a second and here we are back again so here's my shape divider uh angle here my style my background i've got some css on my container uh, I've got just layout, I've got no CSS there, and that is basically my shape divider height, so the height of this before and after uh, for the top and bottom, and setting my overflow to hidden. Now, the reason I'm doing this is with overflow hidden, um, I'm setting the overflow hidden on the parent uh, up here, uh, sorry, on the container up here, um, and then I'm putting some padding on the top and the bottom so that when I put a before and after on the block below that, I can extend beyond that block by the amount of padding I've got without it clipping. And then on the right hand side, it clips. Um, now, the reason I have to do that is because I thought initially, and this is an issue I've had for a long time, uh, the overflow X and overflow Y do not work as you would expect them to. Uh, you would think that you could set the overflow X to hidden and overflow Y to visible. It does not work that way. The minute you set one of them to uh, visible, it affects the other. So uh, it creates all sorts of weird issues. So what we have to do to get around that is on our container, we add padding at the top and the bottom to allow us to overflow from this uh, child container. And on the child, our before and after pseudo selectors can go, or pseudo elements can go uh, that padding distance away from that box without being clipped because it's the parent container that's clipping. That sounds like a mouthful. I'll show you when we actually get to the DOM. All right, so let's have a look at what we're doing. So on the shape divider, top and bottom padding. So we've just got some color at the top and bottom. Uh, a background color just to give us something to uh, behind that shape and as you can see the background color works beautifully with the shape divider uh, so we just pick one of those and our CSS so what we're going to do is set some variables um, and we need to know what height do we want these dividers to be set those to 2.5 rem if you only want them narrow you just set to 1.5 you got a nice narrow uh, divider um, we set the width of the divider, so that's from the side, so the before is positioned to the right, the after is positioned to the left, 
and that's how much of that box we want to come across. If you want less of it, you can make that a smaller number and it moves further away from each other. If you want it to be closer together, you make it a bigger number. That's as simple as that. And the skew, that's how much it's going to skew that box by. Uh, let's say if we make that, say, 20 degrees, it's a very sharp angle there. If we make it 50 degrees, it's a very shallow angle. Okay. And our content BG, content background, uh, I've just made that white. And that color will be used for both the background in these before and after elements and the background in this content box here, uh, which is our uh, block there. Um, so that we only have to change one of these and it changes everywhere. So if I change that to red, it changes the before and afters as well as the content. Okay, I'll change it back to white. All right, and then we just got a calculated uh, divider negative height, uh, which is minus one times our divider height. So our divider height is 2.5 rem. So that's the actual height of this. And what we want to do is for the before element, we wanted to set it to minus the 2.5 from the top. From the bottom, we want to set it to minus 2.5 from the bottom. And that's how we're getting it outside of that box. All right, so we need to target our wrapper, so the content wrapper here, and set the position to relative. So the pseudo elements are relative to this box here. Uh, and then what we want to do is on both the before and the after, typical pseudo element stuff, content, absolute, the width, the height using our variables, and set our background to our content background. Okay, and then one on the before, uh, we want the top, so the, the top of this uh, pseudo element, we want to be the negative, uh, divided negative height, so 2.5 REM away from the top. Uh, and we want to position to the right, and then we want to skew by our skew variable, we want to translate the X by the height so we can push that angle a bit further along and chop it off with our parent um, uh, hidden uh, attribute, overflow hidden attribute. And with the after, we're just doing the same thing, but we're seeing the bottom to the negative divider height, and we're transforming the uh, divider skew, and then we're translating the x by negative divider height. So it moves negative that way, and then the angle part of it gets clipped. So these angles are just a standard div box as a pseudo element uh, with a skew on it and shifting it and then clipping it with its parent. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, a couple of other quick things I'll just look at is our container here. So in our layout, it's our divider height. That's to give us our spacing to so we can go negative with our um, top and bottom attributes without clipping. If we set that too small, if I set that to say 10 pixels, see it's going to clip the top. So we want to make sure that we've got enough padding on our container that our before and after pseudo elements can extend beyond our box without being clipped. That's what that's for. And our content wrapper, so the last thing here is on that content wrapper there, we've got some padding top and bottom, left and right. That's just got spacing around our content. So that'd be whatever you want it to be. Um, and then we have on our background, we're setting this to a variable, which is our variable for our content background, and which is set up in the CSS on our shape divider angle. And the reason we do that is so that we change that one variable. It changes the background of this block as well as changing the background of those two pseudo elements there. And that is it. That is the way this works. It works beautifully. I can change the, uh, where are we, the background here. I can change that to whatever I want it to be. Maybe it's a green or a dark green background. Uh, we want maybe the, go back to our CSS. Uh, we are, where are we? Hopefully this works. Yes, beautiful CSS. And we might make that black. So make that black. And we've got black uh, with the um, dividers all working properly. So I think it's a good solution. Um, love to hear your thoughts, whether you think there's a better way or uh, whether this is too complicated, not complicated enough. Uh, let me know.
Um, but yeah, that's my solution. Thanks for listening.